In the last video of this short series, what we did is we set up a .NET app on an EC2 instance in AWS. In this video, we're going to set up RDS. Now in the previous video, we actually started the process of creating the database only because it takes a long time. And so I'm going to go to RDS and I should have this database here. And I have not changed it at all since then. And so if you want to see how it was configured, then go check the previous video. Now we're going to finish our configuration of this and um, get connected to it. So select it here. Click on the link. I guess you probably don't actually need to do that selection. And just click on the link. And here is our connection information. So first of all, this right here is, is essentially our server name. So we're going to need that. Uh, we are also going to need to open up the port. And so by default, if we go over here to VPC security groups, to this security group, all right, by default, if we look at inbound, um, you're only going to be able to get traffic from, from this, which is not an IP. So I'm going to go edit. I'm going to add a rule. And uh, sometimes they have rules that will work for you. This is the rule for MS SQL. So port 1433. I'm going to throw all security to the wind and open that up right here, which is perfectly fine for just messing around and hit save. So because I have that open, I can connect with SQL Management Studio, Azure Data, whatever. So that's there. So now let's get back to RDS. Back to our database instance. Click on it. And now let's try to connect. So I'm going to take this and open up here I have Azure Data Studio. I'm going to create a connection to the server. There's that. Admin. And my password was super cool. And connect. And hopefully I will be able to connect at this point. I'm assuming I've configured everything and I have. It's all good. So let's go check out our README. So we've allowed port 1433 traffic to our database. Now we're going to connect here and we've done that and we're going to run database script SQL. All right, where is that? Here it is. It's really simple. It creates a database, creates a table, and inserts stuff into it. So let's take it and new query and run. There we go. We have our database, we have our table, we have our, our data in our table. We are ready to go here. So now let's go back to our readme and now we are going to need to set up our connection string. So here's an example right here. So I need to get the same information I used for the server. There's the domain or the server name. And let's see, database cool stuff, admin, password. Mine was super cool. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to use it. And so if I look at app settings JSON, I already have a key there for this. And so let's run this locally. Let's see what happens. All right. Did we connect? Yeah, we pulled the data. What does it look like if we don't connect? Well, hmm. Is my server down? Well, 
Apparently my server is currently down. So let's go turn that thing on. How do I do that? Here's a good refresher for the last video. Instead of deleting this, I'll just leave this in here. And so I want to get back in there. And so I need to go find where I had my SSH stuff. There it is. Okay, CD app. Okay, I had, apparently had shut it down. Okay, RDS exception. I have it locally configured. I have my connection string locally configured. Uh, well, you know, on the server, I don't have it configured. Okay, well, I guess I need to do that. So let's go get that connection string and go to the server. And of course, this is the stack trace from the SQL connection error. That's what that is. That's that is expected. So I need to change the app settings file here. I'll use Vim. If you're not used to the basic keys, I'm just using the arrow keys right now to move around. If I want to change and you know insert some stuff, I need to get into insert mode. I hit I. You can see insert mode there at the bottom. And I'm going to hit paste. And there is my connection string. So to get out of insert mode, I hit escape and then colon W Q will write the disk, or excuse me, write the file to disk and quit. I'm done. Now if we refresh because I stopped the server, this should crash completely. Let's run it. There it is. So now our server is connecting to RDS. Let's get back to our readme. We've connected, we've run the app. All right, we are at, when it comes to our diagram, we are at spot two at this point. Last time, what we did is, we did this first diagram. We just set up a web server in a subnet in a VPC. This time we connected the database. So next time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up another server. This will be fun. Set up another server in a different subnet, create a load balancer, and uh, connect connect all this, and we'll have this cool load balance .NET Core app running in AWS.